even some of the media is, listen, all the polls show voters, 70% of voters don't want Biden, okay? Mm -hmm. Don't want Biden to run again. That doesn't mean that all those people won't vote. You know, some of them are going to vote for him uh, because they also really hate Trump, okay? But 70% of voters are like, please, could we have someone else? And a majority of them, what's their number one concern? It's his age. It's we aren't confident that he's going to be able to effectively and competently serve uh, another term. So there has been uh, a little bit of media scrutiny on this question, and he was recently asked uh, about some of these issues. Let's take a listen to a little bit of that. You've said questions about your age are legitimate, and your response is always, just watch me. But the country is watching, and recent polling shows that 70 percent of Americans, including a majority of Democrats, believe you shouldn't run again. To age, you know, and, and polling data. I notice the polling data I keep hearing about is that I'm between uh, uh, 42 and 46 percent favorable rating, et cetera. And, uh, but everybody running for re-election in this time has been in the same position. There's nothing new about that. We're making it sound like Biden's really underwater. With regard to age, uh, I can't even say, I guess how old I am, I can't even say the number. It doesn't, it doesn't register with me. And, uh, but the only thing I can say is that um, one of the things that people are going to find out, they're going to see a race, and they're going to judge whether or not I have it or don't have it. I respect them taking a hard look at it. I take a hard look at it as well. I took a hard look at it before I decided to run. And, uh, and I feel good. I feel excited about the prospects. And I think we're on the verge of really turning the corner in a way we have in a long time. He's like, oh, voters will have a chance mm -hmm. to evaluate. No, they won't. No, yeah. they won't. No, they won't. Because you have rigged the Democratic primary, mm -hmm. but the state's in the order you want them. You're not going to host any debates. So, yeah, if you have a full and open Democratic process where, oh, you're sitting for interviews and giving more press conferences, this is like a very rare one that he actually did, and people actually have the opportunity to evaluate you versus the alternatives, and you even acknowledge that the alternatives exist, okay, that's a different deal. But they've gone above and beyond to shut down any sort of primary process for all their talk of democracy. When it comes down to it, their whole strategy, and this is what I'm talking about in my monologue in part, given Bernie's endorsement of Biden, their whole strategy is to make people feel like you have no other choice, yes. that there are no other quote unquote serious candidates in the primary. We're about to show you some polling that may uh, say otherwise. And in the general election, Trump is so bad that it's effectively no choice as well. They don't want a democratic process. They want a coronation. They want people to feel they have no other option. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, we're going to talk very specifically about the polling, which is insane, which the media would really rather that you not hear about. And altogether, uh, I just think that the way he has handled it is outrageous. And I also just do want to show everybody a little bit behind the scenes, which we always try to do here. Put this up there on the screen. Uh, Biden cheat sheet shows that he had advanced knowledge of a journalist question. That wasn't the question that you had in front of you, but it was actually the next question uh, where he called on a reporter, the LA Times reporter, Courtney Subramanian. Now, the reporter asked him a question specifically about reshoring semiconductor manufacturing with alliance-based policy. What you can actually see in the cheat sheet that was zoomed in on by the uh, photographers who were present there in a, pr in a picture captured by Getty Images, they show not only her face, they have her title, the pronunciation of her name, and right underneath her question, they have bullet points for his answer on what he's supposed to say. Now, I wanna say this again. I covered the White House, and getting a question before these things, it's a dirty game. The way it works is there's 100 people there, right? You only get two. It's called a two and two. So two from the Americans and two from the foreign press. So everybody's lobbying the press secretary to get a question. You're already pre-selected. I was pre-selected many times. That, that's how it goes. And the also part of the game, though, is they call you and they go, so what do you want to talk about? And you say, you know I can't ask that. You know me. I'm a fair guy. You can choose me if you would like, but I'm not going to get into it. There's yeah. a lot of different things I'd like to ask the president about. It's, again, it's all a game in case somebody slips up and says, here's exactly what I said. I'm not so sure this was a slip up. I think this was a direct, here's what I'm gonna ask. And you know why? Because 
I'm look, I, I think semiconductors are important, but I'm sorry. You get two questions before the president. The first is obviously about the reelection, and the second one is about semiconductor manufacturing policy. Yeah. That's insane. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Like, it, well, you, there are so many more pressing things that you could have asked the man about. And that answer, was the biggest plant that I have yeah. ever seen before. It, it's embar- I mean, it's embarrassing for everyone involved. Yeah. Uh, clearly, his staff, as you point out, every president. Everybody's staff tries to get a jump on, all right, what are these it's reporters going to be asked? Sure, yeah. no yeah. doubt about it. But um, embarrassing for him because there's already these questions about could you handle a question coming out <sighs> at you that you weren't expecting, yes. number one. Humiliating for this journalist oh, yeah. because the, the question that's listed on the sheet is like verbatim. It's exactly it, what she said, it's, which it's, is crazy. She might have emailed it to them. That's what I'm starting to say. Right. So, yeah. I mean, it is the verbatim question that she ends up asking. Not just some general sense of, oh, she might ask about some conductors. No, no, no. Here is the specific <laughs> wording that she is going to use. And here, sir, are your bullet points of what you are supposed to reply. So, listen, put this in uh, the context of the president who was given the fewest press conferences, sat for the fewest interviews, all of their, you know, democracy den- dies in darkness, liberal media, whatever. If Trump was this uh, shut off from the media, they'd be freaking out. If the Republicans were blocking any sort of primary debates, they'd be freaking out. And in fact, there has been lots of outrage coverage about Trump is now suggesting, which is not okay either, that he may sit out from the Republican primary debates. Well, there's lots of outrage. They can see how that's anti-democratic when it's on the Republican side, but when it's Joe Biden, no, that's all fine and good, and it's just what we expect. Uh, At the same time, there's huge effort now in the media to once again paint him as like, oh, he's so electable. This is going to be shoe in no problem. Uh, David Frum, with uh, one example of this genre of analysis, now put this up on the screen. He's saying the coming Biden blowout Republicans thought about running without Trump in 2024, but lost their nerve. They are heading for electoral disaster again. Maybe. Possible. You know, I mean, Democrats did better in the midterms than they were expecting. They still still did lose the House, so it's not like it was amazing for them there either. Maybe people are so done with uh, Trump that they suck it up and, and vote Joe. I think that's a very possible outcome. I also think it's a very possible outcome that we end up with Donald Trump back in the White House again mm-hmm. if he ends up being the Republican nominee. And also, by the way, it's not clear to me that DeSantis or another Republican candidate is actually more electable than Trump either. Maybe, again, possible, but um, that is much murkier to me than it is to people like David Frum, who apparently learned absolutely nothing from 2016. Yeah, these people are nuts. I mean, go and put the next one up there, please, on the screen. Like, look at the general election polling, people. Like, it's not great for Joe Biden. It has RCP average at Trump one plus three. Now look, who knows? The RCP average was off by about four in the Democratic direction. Uh, In 2022, it was off by about four in the Republican direction in 2020. So uh, I guess it averages out. I don't know which way to read that. What I do know is, Crystal, if it's off by four, and so basically, unless you're leading by anything out of that, you're within the margin of error. And if you're within the margin of error, well, you can lose or you can win if you're uh, Trump. So maybe have a little bit of humility about what the hell is going on. They are all cheering for Trump to be the nominee once again. And I just, they learn nothing. They learn absolutely nothing. And also, by the way, many of these people became very wealthy and famous uh, in opposition to Trump. So they have their own sort of incentive as well uh, for him to be the party nominee on the Republican side. Absolutely right. Hey guys, ready or not, 2024 is fully upon us now, and Sagar and I have been brainstorming ways that we can really up our game for this critical election. Yeah, we rely on our premium subs to expand our coverage, to add staff, to upgrade the studio. We just want to give you the best independent coverage of this election, which is possible. So if you can help us out, become a premium subscriber today, breakingpoints.com, or the link is down here in the description video. It really means the world to us, and if you like what we're all about, this is the best possible way to keep us 100% independent, working only for you.